Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with me, Essek Hydra. I bet you didn't think we'd be talking about Inquisitor Barter anytime soon. Well, the developers have put out a stream over the weekend, and here we are doing a little doobly-doo afterwards to have a little discussion about what they've said, a little bit of a summary, as well as perhaps a little bit of a discussion regarding the, uh, the quality and quantity of what was given to us. Now... Firstly, no gameplay footage yet. Supposedly there will be another stream coming next week and there will be more streams over the next few weeks uh, giving us some more actual visual representations of what is coming. It's best described as Martyr is receiving a 2.0, which is going to be the, the sort of Martyr patch 2.0. I'm going to label it as a bit like being the enhanced edition of Deathwing or a, I don't know, a reboot of any game that perhaps had a little bit of a, or needs a little bit of a kick up the backside. Now, what we've got is some pretty substantial changes and I think for those that were somewhat, um, let's say, put off by the original vision of the game, I think this uh, at least sounds very interesting. First up, the power level system, the power rating system, which was, well, had mixed reviews, let's say, in several um, iterations. Well, it's getting junked for a traditional level 1 to 100 system. Uh, level 1 to 60 will be approximately uh, the campaign or duration of the campaign. Then there'll be stuff to do after the campaign. And it's uh, basically a traditional leveling system with getting experience within the mission as well and um, getting that being getting live experience per mob rather than at the end of a mission which is quite the change for martyr and quite something for them to uh, do away with as well as this items now have an eye level and basically you can pick up items that are of a set range around your character but you can equip items only five levels above you now it might seem strange it's not like a an equipable level like you have to be level x to equip this it's like this item is an i a power rate power level well they're calling it an item level now say 65 and you're 60 so well done you can still equip it it's a bit of a weird system to do but hey uh, it sounds fairly simple to get sort of one's head around so that seems pretty cool and well I think it's safe to say that perhaps, 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 although this game as well as Vermintide 2 have, have dabbled with the power rating system, I think it's fairly safe to say that players don't like exchanging items uh, to see and let's call it an arbitrary stat because the stat does do something. It forces you to change gear and allows them to avoid too much damage inflation. But hey, that just doesn't seem to be that popular. So they're doing away with that and I think that's going to be pretty well received. Now the loot itself is also getting a pretty big uh, revamp in, in the game as they are telling us at least. They're going to be a firstly a new item tier. The new item tier is a bunch of items that have randomly rolled abilities on them. What they are exactly, if they're combi weapons or whatever weapons, don't quote me on that, I have no idea. They could be godlike, they could be um, relic weapons, they could be, what's the alternative, demonic, I have no idea. But they have a new tier of weapon, they have actually said they've not chosen the name for it yet, and uh, they're going to have randomly rolled abilities from a specific list. So that's going to be interesting at least, and I think that's maybe moving us one step towards the state where maybe one day we'll be able to select some abilities from a list, who knows. But for now, that seems like a, a move in the right direction at least to give something more interesting for players to find along their way. It's not clear as to whether this will be end game or sort of early game, How what the drop rate's going to be like. Obviously, we won't know details like that just yet, but it's nice. I like it. The fact that someone might have a bolt gun different to another bolt gun. Okay, personally, I can agree with why originally they thought, okay, every bolt gun's going to have the same abilities. It doesn't matter who uses it, because a bolt gun is a bolt gun. And no matter if an assassin has a bolt gun, it's going to do the same thing as a crusader with a bolt gun. Uh, but now they're saying, okay, well, some of these guns are going to be wildly different. And again, how they're going to justify that, how it's going to manifest, who knows. But I think it's exciting and a pretty decent change. As well as this, items are going to be having sockets. So we're going to have basically stat increases on items. Now, if you're a Path of Exile player, I think it's fairly safe to say you shouldn't be getting your hopes up. The explanation we had is it's going to be a bit like an MMO, or maybe like a WoW gem. So I'm expecting things like plus 50 health or 
plus five to your HP regen or something like that. We're probably looking at some fairly generic stats. But supposedly many of the items are going to have two slots in which you can put these gems and, or runes into. I don't think they're actually being referred to as gems. I think they're being referred to as runes. Um, so there is a way to now customise items somewhat and an extra layer of... Um, well, personalization, customization, you can add to the characters. That seems pretty cool. Um, there is there's quite a lot of other sort of generic bits that they've said. So monsters are being rebalanced. There's going to be more sort of mob skills and different HP pools, etc. So there's going to be hopefully some more varied gameplay. And they've said they want the gameplay itself to feel a bit more like a normal ARPG. They've, they've basically broken away from their slow strategic thing I, th I think they've basically said we tried and well we're going to move more towards this because well I have to say I think if you want slow and strategic then XCOM is kind of like get the 40k mod for that and you know that that's kind of got it it had got it down if you want an ARPG, you probably want some fairly fast-paced actions. Okay, Hydra, so what are they doing? Well, what they've said is they're speeding up animations somewhere uh, between... Um, somewhere up to 400%. So a lot of the animations basically are going to be a lot quicker. Grenades and things like that are going to be instantaneous. Character rotation speeds are going to be a lot quicker. So if you're playing a ranged character, doing the sort of um, the shoot step, shoot step, I forget the technical name for that, it's going to be a lot easier. This is interesting, and obviously for those that bought into the game for its slower pace, uh, I'd be very curious to see what some of you think of actually increasing the pace. It's not to say it'll increase dramatically. I mean, I imagine the Crusader will probably still be somewhat slow, but their ambition here is to remove the clunk from the game, and that's basically what they've uh, tried to articulate with this, is they wanted to remove the clunk and make it feel smoother. How well this is all going to sync together, how these animations are going to work, who knows, but they've all been sped up, tweaked and twiddled with, so that's going to be pretty interesting. So, um, as well as that, map fragments um, and various other items can be collected and uh, the way you interact with special missions is going to shift a little bit too. So there's no longer going to be the traditional tarot system where you go on a special tarot mission having saved up loads of fate. And it's not actually clear right now what's happening with the fate mechanic, if that is staying or not, or if that is going. Um, shout out to it being several months later and there's still not being microtransactions for it, like many claim there would be. But anyway, um, basically a tarot system now is going to be an effect you can apply to any mission, but you have to level up your tarot card by, by collecting portions of them during missions. So tarots are now part of the loot, so you want to go out and try and get as many tarots as you can, and then you're going to use them to level up your tarot cards, and then you can use that to uh, basically, or presumably, gain the bonuses I would imagine that we already have. So more XP, more uh, items, more etc, etc. You know how the tarots work, but that's nice. I like the idea of this. It's going to mean each mission has the capacity to be a little bit different, even when you're doing stuff perhaps like campaign, etc. And on that note, it's worth sharing here that cooperative campaign is coming to the game. Now, there's no comment on console if couch co-op is going to still be a blank template character for your compadre or friend. We don't know. But we do know that co-op campaign has been implemented. And again, it's one of these decisions they made with the original game stating, well, we wanted the immersion to sort of be really focused around a single player story and experience. And I think it's safe to say that the majority of ARPG players are just sat there thinking, well, every other game's kind of surrounding a single player story and they let us do co-op anyway like it doesn't really matter if it the cutscene doesn't make sense you know just let me play with my friends and and kill stuff and it seems that basically they've given in and uh, they started to implement this quite some time ago there was mention of co-op campaign so this has been been in the works for quite a while um there are also some other mm -mm, some other bits that i don't know if has been revealed don't think so there's going to be more streams coming up soon, though, and that I'm I'm looking forward to actually seeing some of this in action. I think we're going to get a taster of some of the animation speed changes next week from one of the internal sort of portions. There's no mention of the fortress mode or anything like that, or retinues, anything like that. I think both of those things were kind of junked. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that 100%. I th I'm pretty sure the fortress was junked 
over a year ago and it was just a case of they weren't going to get that done for launch i have no idea if it's still something that they're considering but i think it was pretty much off the table the retinue they were constantly trying to come up with a concept that would work but as far as i'm aware that never quite never quite happened and they've been silent on that so i i'm assuming here with no mention of it that that's probably going to change now that's sorry that's probably not changed now one other thing that i would mention as well is in mission items can now be changed and i think that sort of interests me at least because i think it's going to be good for the early game when you just sort of pick up some gear and just want to slap something on that might be a bit better a bit more interesting it's going to be interesting though because the skill system kind of works around boosting your effectiveness with certain skills so if you pick up a new weapon and it's not got those skills well you're going to have to respec mid-mission in order to be this is why at least personally i never really wanted this feature inside the game because it just didn't seem suited so i'm really curious to see how that's going to work and if the skill systems well i presume it's going to stay fairly similar i wouldn't expect a complete overhaul but we'll have to see it might just be the case that changing new bits of armor might be pretty cool or if you want to try something on to see a skin that will be cool um but i guess it will probably work like a uh, perhaps a bit like an mmo where if you've got finely optimized gear you're going to want to go back to town anyway with a new piece of gear to optimize it and customize it etc there's there's some mentions about crafting being changed as well to make it more useful but we don't have quite the information as to what they're going to do other than making all crafting instance. But we don't know quite what else is going to be done with that in order to change it. I think there was perhaps a mention within the stream that you'll be able to see what enchantment you're going to change to and then change to or, or, or something like that. I have a feeling they're going back to the um, switchable enchants although don't quote me on that that's uh, something i vaguely remember i did make some notes here but that is pretty much it there might have been a couple of things i've missed but to me that's really the the big stuff and i think this is interesting for many people that let's say were a little bit uh not necessarily enamored with the game it wasn't particularly exactly what they wanted and i think rightly so because it was a very different starting arpg and and certainly it came with some clunk plenty of bugs didn't have the smoothest launch but it does seem now that they're trying to do some fairly basically catastrophic changes here and and i i know catastrophic is not a right word because i actually think it's going in the good a good direction potentially since day one i've been really really hopeful that enemies and skills will have sorry enemies will have enough skills in order to make the combat fairly interesting and i'm really 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 curious how they're going to be changing or if they're going to be changing the suppression system because for me that's still one of the biggest barriers to this being a an actual arpg uh, with combat that is interactive because if any every enemy has a shield which prevents you from using any utility against it well that just doesn't work contrast that with chaos bane where every enemy is casting skills at you constantly which you have to interact with but you can also interrupt them using your abilities and that just gives you that extra layer of something you can basically practice to get good so guys i'd like to know what you think down in the comments below you're going to be coming to check this out me of course i'm going to be streaming it for a while once some of these changes are up and uh, there is also some more announcements to come regarding the patch but looks interesting and they have said it will be ready sooner than you think but not that soon then clearly not committing to a date yet but they've said it definitely won't be next year it'll definitely be this year and not that far away but we'll have to wait and see. Guys, have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.